Doug just lifts on his belt perfectly that you really almost can't think of any more jokes to add to it. And then the ending, which then perfectly sets up the next review in Sequel Month 2, which is also a really one of the funniest moments in here. And then, oh, and then, of course, I got to mention some very funny PhD cameos shall we say, around the time when the mad scientist mouse comes into the picture. And so just a really funny review on I mean, another really terrible sequel, with some catchy music in it as well. <laughs> Number one. Back to Spalger Curves episodes from 2011. Oh, come on. Don't act like you know, don't know what this is. I mean, by now, all, all the ones I've gone through on the list, you, you've got to know what this one is. Come on, uh, let, let's just all say it together. One, two, three. Moulin Rouge. Yeah, I know. I mean, you might have been, you know, Expecting this one, I mean, it did get a very positive reaction from both of the fans, but I mean, I really can't. It was, it was actually kind of hard because originally I was going between Moulin Rouge or Never Ending Story Three, and yet somehow Moulin Rouge just pushed it over the edge to eleven, you might say, it's taking what could have been a standard nostalgia trick episode and they turned it into a huge spectacle by themselves, really. I mean, it's hard. I mean, first, I mean, the film itself, you know, Moulin Rouge was just, you know, very over the top and whatnot, and really cliched as well. I, again, this is one I have not seen myself yet. And, and of course, Doug put it on his top 11, or was it, top 10 list of films that he hates, but everyone else loves. So, well, I guess loves. That's always the word that comes up quite a bit in the run room, you think. Love, 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 love. Ah, I see your point. You know? And so it would have been funny enough he had just done it, but then he gets in rental floss, and rental floss. Here's another thing that really makes this review, because he's so funny, all, oh, 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 about the so positive about the movie, and yet, in, in contrast to the critic's cynicism towards it, and so he's just he's really jolly fun, and a uh, good singer too, and, and he's really funny about the song that he has in this one, and, and, you know, dressed up like, looking much like the Dumbo Mouse, and, and he's just really, really funny in the room, and of course he's Review basically introduced me to Brenda Wars. I never heard of his words before, and another very funny internet humorist. And then they also bring in then the nostalgia chick, so this then becomes a three-person review, which is really good because the only other three-person review Doug has done then would be, of course, the great Alone in the Dark review of Spoonie and Linkara. Uh, and another one, one of my very favorite nostalgia Kirk reviews, and so the interplay between Doug, Quincy, and Brendel Flaws, it, it, it just works perfectly going back and forth on the movie. And the songs, the songs, that's another thing that really makes this review so good. They made these really funny, accurate parodies of the songs that are in the movie itself, and they do them in a way that's so much like the movie, and they're all sung very well. There's certainly, you know, the people at Channel Awesome are really good singers and all, it's, it's, it's the occasional musical number every now and then. And so they all sing very catchy versions of these songs, I mean, so that's really good, and that's where they put a lot of the effort, effort into this review, of getting the songs together and all, and it's Brendel Floss, the three-person interplay, the song, and then the cameos. And there are a whole 
bunch of cameos, but they all fit in perfectly. I mean, none of them feel really coarse or, you know, pulled in or unnecessary. I mean, they're, they're all really funny, and I mean, some of them just go by like that, and they aren't that important, but they're still really funny, all of them. And I, in case you haven't, I mean, you should just not have watched this video before seeing any of these reviews, you really should have gone with it. I, I won't say who all uh, the cameos are, in case on the off chance you don't seem to think they all work perfectly, but they all come together to make what could have been just another simple review, and they all just make it a grand spectacle on um, this level of a review. So that's why I picked it as in the number one spot. He hated it, berated it, for causing so much misery. I didn't even get a line! So, that's my top 11 list of the Nostalgia Trick episodes from 2011. I hope you enjoyed it, and... I hope maybe we have some comparisons with your own personal favorite reviews from 2011, and I certainly hope you enjoyed the countdown. I'm film reviewer Schultz. I remember it because you probably don't want to. Although in the case of today's episode, you should want to. And of course, you do not happen to like the sound for it. I mean, there are some people who just don't. I mean. Or really anyone from Channel Awesome. I mean, they seem to be very anti, you know, internet reviews whatsoever, people, really, and all this, and I don't know, and people may seem to, you know, not really seem to care for it, you know, and then, you know, the year anniversary, you know, they just. It just really makes me want to watch this and the phone rings.